Do you ever get the feeling there is more to history than what we've been told? It's clear that ancient Egypt conceals secrets that have eluded us for centuries. In this video, I'll uncover mysterious untold discoveries that challenge the mainstream narrative and question what we have been led to believe by archaeologists. The kind of mysteries that would lead Graham Hancock to get overly excited and put to bed those same old stories we hear about chisels and hammers. All right, let's begin in Giza, Egypt. Another discovery has been made that could challenge our understanding of history. In the shadows of the iconic Great Sphinx, a revelation emerged that sent shockwaves through the archaeological world. Recent investigations have unveiled what many believe to be a second sphinx. It's clear that if this is a second sphinx, that it was badly eroded away over time. It's situated about 250 meters from the original. Looking at the formation of the carved rocks, it carries many of the distinctive features. As is the case with the first sphinx, there is a puzzling detail which appears on the second, something which has led to speculation about the age of the sphinx for decades. The second sphinx shows the same weathering patterns on the rock, which could have only happened if these incredible monuments are many thousands of years older than what archaeologists would have us believe. The first statue is facing east, whilst the second statue is facing west. It is believed this could follow the path of the sun and the sun god Ra. Both have very similar measurements, and intriguingly, there are ten openings carved into the body some of which lead to rooms, and others just lead to dead ends. It's clear further investigation is required to fully understand what other mysteries lie within this impressive monument. But even more recently, a new question has emerged. Could there be a third Sphinx statue waiting to be uncovered? One that stands to protect the Third Pyramid of Giza, the Pyramid of Menkor. But this is not the only discovery that holds many mysteries. There are several underground passages and networks of tunnels laying beneath the Giza necropolis. Take this first example. In this video clip from 1999, Dr. Zahi Hawass explains that they excavated 100 feet below Kafer's pyramid complex to find an unusual tomb structure. This was believed at the time to be the tomb of Osiris, the god of the underworld. The Osiris shaft is a deep well with multiple levels of tunnels and chambers carved into the bedrock. The first part of the tunnel descends to a depth of 30 meters and contains six chambers, some of which were filled with water. Then there are two other chambers, which descend deeper underground, eventually leading to a stone sarcophagus. But as amazing as this discovery was, there are several other mysteries beneath the Giza Plateau that most people don't know even exist. When the Madain Project conducted a full survey on the Sphinx, they found no less than seven tunnels or shafts directly leading into it. In the 1920s, Edgar Cayce, an American clairvoyant, made an incredible prophecy that the Hall of Records would be found hidden under the Sphinx. And when these YouTubers managed to get themselves extremely rare private access to go inside, you can see it looks completely hollow. And then there are these elaborate decorative tombs right next to the pyramids of Giza, some with intricately carved statues from ancient times. But wait, if the tombs are out on the plateau, then why do archaeologists believe that the pyramids were resting places for the Egyptian pharaohs, even though we haven't found any evidence of that? I digress. Back to the Giza necropolis. When we expand our search over the whole plateau, we start to see even more. There are tunnels that lead directly to each pyramid, and there are several shafts and entrances, most of which have been gated off by the Egyptian government. However, as you can see from this YouTuber's exploration and his guide, some are accessible. And if you think Giza is full of mystery, this next place will absolutely blow your mind. In the Egyptian city of Tanis, which was once the capital of Egypt, what can only be described as an ancient archaeological graveyard sits there unexplained. Maybe this is the resting place of discarded and failed attempts at colossal statues and stone pillars. Or is there more to this mysterious place than meets the eye? Tanis is full of broken artifacts and megaliths. Some have described the artifacts as obliterated, and you can definitely see why. 
Archaeologists are perplexed by it. The closest explanation we've had is that the site was abandoned after the Nile Delta deposited silt there some thousands of years ago. But that doesn't explain the sheer volume of artifacts we see here. It doesn't explain how they were found broken and scattered everywhere. In the vast desert landscape of Sakura, French archaeologist Auguste Mariette stumbled upon a subterranean world in 1850, a discovery that would baffle and intrigue scholars for generations. This underground complex, known as the Serapium, houses a series of gargantuan stone boxes, each weighing in at a staggering 100 tons. The precision with which these colossal boxes were crafted, with interiors smooth to perfection, and how they managed to transport these giant boxes underground has perplexed Egyptologists, leaving us questioning the mainstream archaeological narrative once again. In 1820, within the sun-baked ruins of the ancient city of Memphis, explorers made a discovery that would captivate the world, a monumental statue depicting Ramses II, one of Egypt's most powerful pharaohs. This colossus, crafted from a single piece of limestone, originally stood at a staggering height of over 30 feet and weighed an incredible 83 tons. Its sheer size and intricate detailing are baffling. How is this possible with primitive tools? And this is not the only one. There are many more colossal statues dotted all over Egypt, leading us to question how these were possible at a time where the only method of sculpting would have been with Bronze Age tools. And if you think that is baffling, this next discovery will leave you gobsmacked. While many pharaohs left behind statues and monuments, those of Pharaoh Amenhotep and his family are unlike any other to have existed. Born Amenhotep III, but later changing his name to Akhenaten, this pharaoh was unlike any before him. Several artifacts have been discovered over the years, and strangely these statues depict the Egyptian pharaoh and his family in a style that completely deviates from the traditional ancient Egyptian artistic norms. Instead of the usual representations, Akhenaten, his queen Tai, and their children are shown with elongated skulls, heavy-lidded eyes, and other unusual and unique features. This divergence in artistic representation has fueled endless speculation and intrigue. Why did Amenhotep choose to be depicted so differently? We're told it was just an artistic choice by Egyptologists, but as usual, we are not provided with the evidence to back this up. And whilst we are on the subject of pharaohs and their depictions, this next set of artifacts will leave you wondering how this is even possible. Unearthed in 1908 by renowned archaeologist George Reisner, this statue, depicting King Menkor, is truly captivating. Carved from a single slab of stone, the statue portrays Pharaoh Menkor, the goddess Hathor, and a gnome deity. But it's not just the fact that the statue you see here is so incredibly precise. The truly perplexing thing about it is that there is not just one of these statues. These artifacts, with incredible laser precision, look like they came right off a production line. How is it possible to achieve this level of intricacy? Not once, but many times over, without a single mistake. And whilst we're on the subject of technology, as much as we are going to frustrate Egyptologists and put them in a tizzy, I need to show you this next incredible discovery. In 1984, a group of scientists were given rare access to study the casing stones from the pyramids of Giza. Taking core samples from the casing stones provided them with the material they needed to gain an insight into the type of stone used and the composition of it. They hoped to match this back to the quarries, said to have been used by the ancient Egyptians. The quarry samples revealed pure limestone. However, the casing stones from the pyramids had a different composition. The composition meant that the casing stones did not come directly from the quarries, as Egyptologists have previously told us. But if they were not from the quarries, then where were they from? Another intriguing observation was the density and structure. The casing stones were light and had numerous trapped air bubbles, while the quarry samples were uniformly dense, not to mention the fact they found human hairs within them. These stark differences suggest that the casing stones were not natural limestone and were in fact man-made 
and cast in place using an ancient concrete. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel where you can find many more mysteries and discoveries from ancient civilizations.